What we're creating, well, when we're taking your company, there's something, a little something I like to call the connected enterprise. Specifically, the connected transportation enterprise. Now, what do I mean by connected? Your con uh, connections with your customers, connections with your trading partners, connections with your staff, connections with your drivers, and the movement of information among all those parties. We're talking about getting the right information to the right person at the right time. The connections don't mean a lot unless uh, you're, you're moving the right information. As an example, I'll just use as a visual aid, a smart tablet computer. This happens to be my iPad. Now the tablet computer was actually predicted uh, in 1990. In 1990, the uh, computer software trade press was predicting this device would be available by 1995. And in fact, because my vice president of marketing told me he bought one, uh, they were available in 1995. Tablet computers, the first tablets. Several manufacturers came out with a tablet computer. But they went nowhere. It was a miserable failure. It was such a big failure that when uh, Apple announced uh, their tablet computer just a few years ago, uh, still much of the industry, remembering the failure of the first batch of tablets, said, well, it's not going to go over. We've tried that, and it, and it failed. Uh, what uh, so many failed to realize uh, was that a lot of changes had occurred in the infrastructure in the meantime. The rise of the internet, obviously, had enabled connection to all the information sources available really around the world, certainly around the country. Uh, the wireless technology, cellular, uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabled uh, large amounts of data transfer to get the information uh, where it needs to go. So. Um, this is an important infrastructure that we're building on top of. So we're not bringing about this uh, connected enterprise all by ourselves. We've got support from the whole industry and uh, we're doing it against that uh, backdrop. At the same time, when I got my iPad, I'll, I'll tell you this, my wife also has an iPad. They look very similar from the outside. But if you look at, if you look at the way they're configured, they're nothing alike. Uh, her iPad is configured uh, for her purposes and, and she enjoys it a great deal and uh, gets a lot done with it. And I've got a very different set of applications uh, on mine that allow us to do the things that we want to do. Uh, in a similar way, the systems that we've got to provide to you need to be configurable. You're serving customers that have a wide uh, range of needs. They're asking you to do all sorts of things, some of which you've never been asked to do before. The product has to be configurable, has to cover a wide footprint, and it has to enable you to move into market opportunities uh, when those market opportunities appear. And we're working very hard to uh, provide the applications that will allow you to do that, and we're looking for your feedback also at this conference uh, you know, to help point us in the right direction. So here we are working to usher in what, what I call the frictionless information era. Now we got the trade press sitting right down here on the front. I want to be sure everybody got that, got that phrase. Frictionless, I'm not sure that's a word, but uh, hopefully convey my meaning that we want to move information we're not about connection for connection's sake. You want to get information, and it needs to be the right information. It's got to be available to go to the right person at the right, right time. Otherwise, you're flooded with enormous amounts of data that are impossible to deal with. But by frictionless, I'm talking about reducing the effort, reducing uh, the uh, work that's required to move information from where it is exists in your database or from external sources and getting it to the people that are making decisions in time to make a difference 
in your business, to help you run more efficiently, to help you serve your customers better. Uh, a, a great visionary of the transportation industry, Fred Smith, the founder of uh, Federal Express, said years ago that the information about the package is as important as the package itself. Now there's several places where that information is important. The way you handle the information and getting it to your customer about their load of freight, about their shipment, uh, is important during the shipment, certainly. It's important once the uh, load of the package is delivered to the receiver as well as to the shipper. Certainly that's important. Another place that's very important is when your customer is making the decision on who to move the next load of freight. When they're making that decision, their consideration of who can handle the information as well as they handle the freight is very important when they're making the buying decision. And I believe that's a big part of what uh, Mr. Smith had in mind when he talked about the importance of moving the information. Our job is to help you do that better. We want to see you competing uh, in the marketplace and winning. We want to give your people a chance with the right information to make the right decision and win in the marketplace. And that's when things can get fun. That's when it's uh, certainly a lot more fun than when you're uh, swimming uphill. So the, the uh, movement of information with minimal effort, sliding it across the ice with little or no friction is where we want to go. And that's the way I'd like to present in that context the new features, new functions we've been adding to our software for the past several years. And that's where we're going with our products. Uh, many of the things, if you see them in that context, are going to make a lot more sense. Uh, we use five, I'm going to talk about five technology streams that we have used to make decisions on our priorities for development. Five technology streams that work together, that support one another, that enable uh, one another, and that will take you uh, into a place of higher efficiency and better service for your customers. It's what they're asking for. How many of you have customers that are asking you more for this year than they asked for a couple of years ago? They're asking you to do more. They're asking for more information. They're asking you to handle more kinds of freight. Uh, it's challenging. And those are the kinds of problems that are weeding out your competition. We want you to have better tools and, and be better able to handle those uh, types of opportunities. So we're talking about these five technology streams, essentially five principles behind our product development. We want the software to be proactive. We want the information effort to be zero when possible, to go to the right person at the right time under the right configuration. We want a product that will yield big insight into what you're doing. We want to uh, take advantage today of everything mobile and the new technology capabilities that didn't exist just a few years ago. We want to extend our workflow beyond boundaries, beyond your enterprise, and establish movement of information inside and outside your company. And we're able to do that through a modern and connectable architecture which uh, has actually undergirds and supports all of the other technologies. So first I'll talk about uh, the, the proactive aspect or technology stream that's enabling us to do more with our products. Again, pushing the right information to the right person in time uh, to make a difference in the decision making. Uh, we've seen very positive results from many of the capabilities that are already in the product. Certainly a cornerstone for this capability is a rapid alert notification system. This system already allows dozens of configurable alerts to go to the right party or to multiple parties when events happen. Your key customer can be notified of a load pickup and delivery. Your operations people can be copied in on the notification. Your salesperson for that customer can also 
uh, get the notification. Your new customers, you can be notified of a first load shipped. Our ETA and out of route system certainly providing advance notification. Once configured correctly, uh, it's amazing to me that we've got, uh, we still have some, some sites that don't fully harness this capability. Certainly a driver, automated driver detention, being able to you know, fully automate the um, uh, calculation of detention time, the notifications that go on, and the addition of those charges to your uh, billing. Our check call subsystem can notify you that a driver hasn't called in on particular loads that require call-ins. Uh, a lot of ways that we're making the right information available to you uh, in order to allow people to focus on their higher payoff activities, uh, to allow them to manage by exception and to uh, uh, spend quality time, more face time with customers and with drivers uh, to accomplish more in the relationship building, which is so critical uh, to your business with your customers. And this is the path we're going in the future. We'll be adding more and more to our ability to alert you to the key information that's required to run your business better. For example, uh, providing alerts for events that haven't happened yet. Uh, provide an alert for operations for rate confirmation that hasn't been re received back from a customer or the car carrier, uh, let's say two hours before the load is supposed to pick up. Let's say you've got certain goals that are set have not yet been achieved, providing an alert that action needs to be taken in order to achieve those goals. Uh, a lot of other things that will uh, continue to make the movement of information uh, more seamless and more effortless within your organization. The second area of technology is to provide big insight. And if you, you can recognize that I've substituted the term big insight for big data. In fact, that's big data has to become big insight for it to become useful. Uh, one reason we can begin to provide big insight is because the big data is there both within your system and available from external sources. And we're looking to make connections uh, with all of those, all of the data, all of the information that's available. But it needs to be provided in a form that's summarized, that's clear, and that's timely. It, we uh, get the information uh, to the right person, to the decision maker, uh, at the right time. We've laid a good foundation uh, for this. Our profitability analysis allows you to see operating ratio on, for loads that pick up on Tuesday, for example, uh, versus loads that pick up on Friday. You can compare these parts of your operation. You can compare operating ratio by customer. Our lane analysis uh, module uh, lets you see profitable and unprofitable lanes. Uh, gives you great insight into the operation. Our vital signs continues to show the tremendous impact positive impact on the companies that are using it to configure it to allow every person, uh, especially in operations, uh, insight into their activities and where their focus needs to be on their daily goals. The biggest, some of the biggest behavior changes we're seeing, changes uh, are happening uh, as a result of this module. And we have a core group using our Navigator product uh, where we're providing pre-configured uh, data warehouse dimensions to allow you to get that up and running much more quickly than you'd be able to do get a data warehouse going um, in the past. So in the future, where are we going? We're going to provide more information at the point of decision. We're bringing in, again, data from internal and external sources so that when you're quoting a, a spot quote, you're negotiating uh, a rate for a spot load, or when you're uh, responding to uh, a bid request or for contract rates, you've got better support for your rate history, rate requirement, your profitability in certain market areas. Again, from both internal and external sources, connecting you to the best information to make the best decisions and run a better operation. We're doing much of that, uh, beginning to do that through our pricing and bid management module, which was in, in, introduced in the spring and which is enhanced in the release that we're, we'll be showing here at the, today's conference. We'll also be bringing in more information from the outside, for example, for driver hours and event planning, making that visible in more places throughout the planning and driver management systems uh, to enable you to do uh, a better job and to maximize your utilization of your drivers and tractor fleet. 
The next technology stream that certainly becoming, uh, has become more and more prevalent in the last few years is taking advantage of mobile. Uh, as a smartphone, smart tablet, uh, devices continue to improve in their capability. This b allows you to extend your reach for the information beyond your enterprise with your people and free them up to be where they need to be and uh, still uh, have access to the information that's necessary for them to do their jobs well. <clears throat> uh, we are actually in this version six of our mobile applications. We've had a very bright uh, group of developers internally. Uh, they'll be presenting today. Uh, about, we're talking about new things that we're adding to our very robust suite of mobile applications. Much of it was enabled on, on, on technology decisions that our uh, technology uh, team made uh, 15 years ago. And my compliments are our Vice President of Technology, Rusty Watkins, and his uh, technical team for their leadership in that area. The decisions, many decisions they've made, standing in some very good stead, allowing us to rapidly develop and uh, uh, rapidly extend our product line. But with the current application, you can a driver, a dispatcher can approve approve a, an advance request while standing in line at the supermarket. Uh, they can check load status and respond to mobile com messages while sitting in the bleachers at the ball game. Uh, this is freeing people up to. Uh, do their job and also uh, potentially improve uh, quality of life. Uh, we're, we're providing more and more of our vital signs, key performance indicators uh, on a mobile basis as well. And where are we going with our mobile applications? Uh, we're looking for more configurable alerts. Certainly the configuration is key. You can be overwhelmed uh, with alerts if not configured correctly and we're working to help make the best recommendations in that area. We've extended our mobile applications to our customer relationship management system so that it, when you're following prospective customers and current customers for checking load status, uh, current capability, your salespeople can log sales costs when on site, they can see load status, accounts receivable status, revenue performance for that customer on the way in the door to make a sales call. Make these calls much more productive. Make your people much more connected with the information. Get it into a central place where you can see what's going on and be more effective as a company. And today, we're going to introduce uh, mobile applications that you can provide to your customer. This is a big step for many of you that have key customers, and certainly it's a request we've had and proud to present at this conference. I'll talk about that a little bit more in just a few minutes. We're extending our workflow product. For a long time, we've had workflows inside of our system. Thanks to our imaging group, uh, we've had a tightly integrated imaging product now for years, very robust in terms of its functionality. Um, at this point, we're extending that workflow capability, our business process management, to m uh, move information uh, outside of the system as well as move it within the system. And this uh, enables you to make more connections with your customers. Uh, for a long time, our rendition billing has been a fabulous time saver, one of our quickest payback items in our entire product line, able to uh, process billing, checking for exceptions, enforce specific customer requirements before invoices can go out, moving the invoices out electronically, or through the customer's preferred means. Uh, it's been a tremendous uh, time saver, reducing the friction, reducing the work required to get these repetitive tasks done. Now we've taken that a step further. Our FlowLogix work, workflow engine is allowing user configurable decision trees, user configurable workflows that can accommodate a wider variety of scenarios with reduced effort uh, for implementation. <clears throat> Come on. So where, where, do we, where are we going in the future? To provide more flexibility in setting up these information and, and allowing you the ability to get information from outside the system as well as moving the information within your system where it needs to go. Uh, there's a lot of steps that are required when you bring a new driver 
on board, whether you're bringing the data in from, from outside, or whether you generate it internally, uh, several steps, uh, being able to move those along quickly, make sure no steps are, are missed. One of the advantages of the workflow. When a driver leaves, there's the same issue, being able to take through the steps and set, setting up a workflow, and this is where we're going. Uh, rating workflows that will handle the exceptions without anybody having to touch it. Again, reducing, reducing the work, reducing the friction required to process the information that's in your system and to get the exception information to the right person at the right time. Uh, but an example of a rating exception would be uh, lumper pay, uh, having the system uh, automatically check to make sure there's lumper receipts for settlements that require lumper pay. Uh, checking for the settlement payment amount being within the acceptable parameters, uh, allowing the routine transactions to be processed uh, without anybody touching it and uh, allow the exceptions to be handled with uh, review. Much of this is being enabled by, as I mentioned earlier, an, an architecture that we've been laying the foundation for for years and years. Uh, we called it connect, connectable architecture because the marketing team wouldn't let me say SOA, uh, service-oriented architecture. This is the industry standard for setting up uh, interact connectivity and interoperability between systems and has been for years. We've been building this out. This is what's enabled our rapid development of our mobile uh, applications. Uh, we're using the same business logic that's using our uh, rich client and desktop applications where most of the work will still be done. Certainly we're seeing people put, put up two, three, four screens in order to provide better visibility and getting, and getting more done uh, while at their desk. Certainly people coming together in the same building facilitates communication and that's going to continue to happen. But extending it and being able to do that quickly and to uh, enforce all the rules in the same business logic by putting all that in a middle tier has been um, a very important to allow us to rapidly extend and add so much so quickly to our product line. Our uh, service-oriented architecture API document is over 350 pages and counting. Actually, it was three, I put down 300 uh, you know, when I drafted the, uh, when I did the initial draft for this presentation. Uh, an example of what this does for us is uh, recently we looked at a, a, an interface with a new business partner that was going to require two to three weeks worth of effort. It turns out that with our current release, the level of effort is reduced to one day. And this connectability is going to let you do uh, a lot more in the future. And this is where we're going. This is where we want to take you. Uh, you'll be able to access more sources, uh, for example, for rate support, for seeing what's going on in the marketplace, and getting that into your system and visible at the right point when decisions are being made. You'll be able to connect potentially to your customer systems when they uh, request and allow that. Uh, we're ready to go. Uh, you'll be able to offer them an external uh, status for uh, APIs. We'll be able to integrate rail rates much more easily, and that's, that's underway right now to get that done. Uh, allowing you to respond to the things your customers, some of them are already asking for. So these five streams, the, the, the things that we'll talk about in the sessions over the next two days, the list of uh, new features and functions in the system, that, uh, by classifying them through these five streams can help clear the picture up. And many of the things that we do, many of the improvements that we make, very difficult to put on a feature list. Uh, improvements in, uh, that we make for performance and for the uh, uh, underlying architecture that are positioning you to take advantage of those market opportunities are important uh, and, and we're working on that uh, hard on your behalf. So, how well are you connected? How well do you move the information throughout your system? Our, I know that the people here are typically doing a, a better job with it, and we appreciate that, and I know that you're 
uh, more likely to uh, take advantage of the things that we've been working on.